Welcome to the second in my series on Vectric software titles for the absolute beginner. If you missed my previous video on job setup and basic navigation, I'll put a link up here in a card right about here. Before we get started, let me restate my disclaimer here. I am not sponsored nor I am, am I endorsed by Vectric Limited or any other company. They don't even know I'm alive. I'm doing this series to help the beginning CNC user learn the software, get used to the software, and build some confidence in their themselves and their skills. I'm gearing this series toward the absolute beginner who again has never done anything like this before and show you that you can do this. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial and we'll start by opening up our demo file. Now this is a file that I created earlier for this presentation and we have a simple rectangle here with a big star in the center. Now for those who are into numbers and want to see the job set up, let's go ahead and look at that. This is a single-sided project, meaning I'm only going to be cutting on this side of the material. My width in X of the material itself is 16 inches. The height in Y is 11 and a quarter. And I have a nominal thickness of 3 quarters of an inch. I'm working in inches, obviously. My Z0 position is set to the surface of the material, here. My XY datum position for layout is right in the center. My modeling resolution, I'm going to go ahead and jump up to very high, just so we can get a good preview photo. And for appearance, I'm going to switch over to maple to get a higher contrast in our preview. We'll go ahead and we'll click OK. And there we have our job setup done. Now in this video, I'm going to pick up kind of where I left off last time when we were learning some basic navigation and selecting vectors and moving about on the screen. The first thing I'm going to talk about is up here we have two tabs. We have the two-dimensional view, which is this view that we're in right now, showing us just as if we were looking straight down on our work table at our piece of work material. Then we have a three-dimensional view over here. When I click that tab, it brings us into the 3D view. And this shows us our piece of work material in 3D space. Now, I'm using a standard two-button mouse on my PC with a scroll wheel. And this scroll wheel I can push down on, it's another button. So when I just zoomed out just a second ago, all I did was I moved my scroll wheel backwards to zoom out and move it forwards to zoom back in. Now in the 3D view, I can put my cursor over my material, click, and drag upward and it's rotating the surface of the material. I can start in this corner and drag it this way, start in this corner and drag it that way, but it shows it as a flat plane. Now in about 90% of what I'm doing in VCarve, I'm not looking at the 3D preview at all. I only use that if I'm cutting a 3D model or doing some wrapping for my rotary axis. So to return this to a straight up and down view, we'll come up here to this icon right here with the Z. The Z is showing me that's the dominant view. That's I'll be looking down from the Z. Click that and it returns it to the standard view. We go back to the 2D view which is where we're going to spend most of our time. And again, the same is true here. I can use my scroll wheel, move it forward to zoom in, and backward to zoom out. But notice that when I do that, 
the scroll is proportional. And what I mean by that is, wherever I have my cursor placed on the screen, that's where it's going to zoom into. So if I put my cursor up in this corner, it's going to zoom to that area. If I put my cursor here in the center, it's going to zoom to that area. If I need to move the material or pan on the material, like I have it shoved way up toward the top now, I can put my cursor just wherever, push down on the scroll wheel, and drag my view around like so. You'll notice my scales here move as I do that. Now I've still got it kind of out of whack, meaning it's not in the middle of my screen. So I'm going to show you one of these zoom buttons up here. This one here to the right is zoom the active view to a selected object. Well, I don't have any objects on my screen selected, so if I click that button now, what it'll do is it'll return this piece of work material to the center of the screen, like so. Now, this icon is also very handy if you happen to be zoomed into an area and you want to back out and look at what the entire project. You just come up and with nothing selected, click that icon and it zooms you back out to where your piece of material is filling the center of the screen. If you do have a vector selected and you click on this zoom button, it will zoom in to where that object fills the center of the screen. This also comes in handy if you're working on a certain segment of it and you want to zoom back out to check your progress, click that icon and it zooms out to where that object is filling your screen. And then if you're finished and want to look at the entire project, you deselect by clicking off, click that icon again and off you go. There is yet another way to zoom in on a specific portion of an object, and that is using this icon here. And that is zoom your 2D view to a mouse drawn box. If you wanted to zoom in on just a certain section of the object, say the tip of this star here, I could click this icon, then move back down here, and you'll notice my cursor has changed to a magnifying glass. I can bring it over here above the tip of the star, click and hold my left mouse button and draw a box around the tip of that star. Then when I release it, it zooms into that portion. Then from there, you'll notice my cursor has gone back to just the arrow. If I want to zoom in on this tip even further, I would have to click the icon again, draw the box, and then it zoom in. That's just a quick way of zooming in and out of your material, of your objects, of your artwork, so that you can see what's going on and navigate around your piece of material. Okay, up until now we have concentrated over here in the CAD side of the Vectric software, which is the design or drawing side of the software. Now we're going to get into the CAM side, which is computer-aided manufacturing and we're going to calculate a couple of toolpaths for this project. And we're going to start with the most basic of the toolpaths, and that is the profile toolpath. Being as the Vectric software is a Windows-based program, there are about four different ways of doing the exactly the same thing. The first, easiest, and probably the most common method I use is to come up over here to this icon right here, which is switch to the toolpaths command. And when I click on that button, it'll close my drawing box over here and open up the toolpath box over here. Some folks like to keep both of them up at the same time. Some folks, like me, prefer not to. Let me click this one 
this icon up here and that'll take me back over to my drawing tab and I'll show you how that's done. With my drawing tab open you'll notice I have this pin which is straight up and down. That's the auto hide feature. And I'll show you why that's relevant right now. If I come up here and look, I've got a tab right here that says toolpaths. If I hover my cursor over it, you see how my toolpath tab opened up. Now if you look at the pin right here on this one, auto hide, it's sideways. That means when I move my cursor off of the panel, it closes. If I move back up here, and cover that toolpaths tab it comes back. If I click that pin you see it goes vertical. Both tabs stay open full time. Now personally I find this to be an encumbrance. I want my work area to be as large as possible so I keep one side open or the other. I don't generally keep both sides open. But this is one of those cases where there is no best whatever works for you is the best way. If you want to keep both open, that's fine. There's not a thing wrong with it. But for me, I prefer to keep one panel open or the other, not both at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Auto Hide again so that when I come off of that, it goes away, giving me a larger work area here. With all my vectors drawn, all my vectors placed where I want them to be placed and I'm ready to start calculating toolpaths so I can machine this part. I'll go ahead and go into my toolpath tab. In this toolbox we're very limited in that we basically have material setup and toolpath operations and there are a bunch of different operations for us to do. This one here is probably the most ignored area in uh, the toolpath tab. And that's the material setup. In the material setup tab, it's almost the same as our job setup back over here in our drawing tab. But there's a few differences. If we look here, what we've got is we've got our material setup with our Z set to the surface of the material, which I don't want to change. I want that to stay there. But I still have my XY datum set to the center of the material. Now when I'm working on my CNC, I prefer my XY datum outside on the machine to be set down to the front left corner here. So I can either go back into my drawing tab and change that in job setup, or I can change that here by clicking on the set button. And the set button, you have more options here than you do in job setup. My, my thickness is going to stay the same. If I were to use this pattern on a piece of material that was thicker or thinner, this is where I would come and change that. So if I my material was a half inch thick, I would change that here. My XY datum, now I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom left corner. And you notice that my crosshairs jump down here with the red dot square indicating my zero zero point. That's where I want my zero zero set out on the CNC machine. I'm still zeroing my Z to the material surface. The model position in material, because everything I'm going to do is a two dimensional cut, this will not change. I will have the radio button in gap above model and it will be set to zero. More on this in future videos. You may have heard the phrase safe Z. What that means is the area on your material that's your Z height where it's safe for your CNC to move at its rapid rates. So there you set the height above the surface of the material where your bit can move. If you have clamps set up out here on these edges and those clamps are a half an inch tall, you need to make sure that your Z clearance, Z1 here, is taller than those clamps. That's how you avoid a crash. If I had a half inch tall clamp out here right now with my 
Z, safe Z set at point 2, I run the risk of running that bit into a clamp at its rapid rate. That can get real exciting real fast. On this piece of material, for this demonstration, I won't be using any clamps. I'll just be mounting it with using another method. So 0.2 inches is just fine for my Z, safe Z setting, meaning that the bit will lift up 0.2 inches and move over at its rapid rate, plunge in and start cutting. Speaking of plunge, we have plunge right here, Z2, is 0.2 inches. What this means is, when the bit plunges down to start cutting into the material, it will plunge down at its rapid rate until it gets 0.2 inches above the material. Then it will slow down to the plunge rate I have set for that bit. And we'll get into that in just a minute. So if you need to adjust your safe Z height or your safe plunge height, this is where you do it. Z1 and Z2, right here. My home start position, where the bit is going to start turning and take off from and start cutting this file, will be 0, 0, and the Z gap above the material is 0.8. Meaning, when I turn on the machine and hit cycle start in Mach 3, the bit, no matter where it's at, if it's out here somewhere, it's going to lift up to 0.8 inches above the material, come over here to 0, 0. Then it will move to the first place it needs to go to start cutting the vectors. This is where you would change that if you don't think 0.8 is necessary. You can change it to the same thing as your safe Z. But this number should always be bigger than this number. We'll go ahead and get out of that. That was a lot of information at once. You may never need to change your safe Z. Just know that if you do, this is where you do it. We'll go ahead and click OK. Now, the first toolpath we're going to focus on today is the profile toolpath. And I've got two vectors drawn here. I have this star, which I'm going to cut with a V-bit. And I have this rectangle, which is I'm going to cut with a quarter-inch end mill. This rectangle represents the outside profile, the perimeter, of the finished project. I'm going to be cutting this out. That's going to be the final size of my project. I'll be cutting that out of this piece of material. And to do that, we're going to be using the profile toolpath. This is probably the most commonly used toolpath within the software. But first, I'm going to carve the star with a V-bit. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this star's silhouette, just cut the outline of the star. With this vector selected, with the star selected, I'll come over here to my profile toolpath icon and click it, and it opens up this form. Now, the profile toolpath is, as I said, the most, probably the most used toolpath within the program. It's also the most complex. And the only reason it's complex is because you have so many choices. We're going to go with right down from the top and go all the way down to the bottom. We start with our cutting depths. Our start depth up here in D, in this case, is going to be zero. It's almost always zero. Not always, but almost always zero. That means it's going to start cutting from the top surface of the material. Our cut depth is how deep into the material we're going to cut. Now, I don't want to cut this star out of this material. I just want to cut the shape into the material, engrave or carve the shape into the material. So I'm going to use a 90 degree V-bit for this. Now, 
if I didn't already have 90 degree V bit here, I would just click select, come down here and select it out of my tool database. And I've got a couple of different size of 90 degree V bits listed here in my database, but I'm going to use the one with a half inch diameter. Feeds and speeds. For this demonstration, I'm going to accept what we have. The only thing I would, only caveat being the plunge rate. Before, when I was talking about the safe plunge rate, and we set that at point 2, the tool is going to drop down at its rapid rate, and when it gets to point 0.2 above the material, it will slow down to 20 inches per minute. That's the speed at which the bit's going to plunge down into the material and start cutting. We'll click OK. Oh boy, I forgot to kept ch change my cutting depth. My cutting depth for this, I don't want to cut all the way through the material, but I don't want to cut 3 eighths of an inch into the material either. I only want to cut about a sixteenth of an inch into the material. So let me highlight that, hit backspace to clear it. And here I'm going to use one of the calculators in VCarve Pro, or this is in all of the Vectric titles. I want to cut that about a sixteenth of an inch deep. I can't remember off the top of my head what the decimal equivalent of one sixteenth of an inch is. So what I'll do is I'll let VCarve do the math for me. And I'll type on my keyboard one front slash one six for one sixteenth and then hit the equals button. And it does the math for me. I've got my tool set up. It's going to cut that in one pass, which is fine. We get down here to machine vectors and it's already selected for me. I want that bit to ride right on this vector and cut right on the line. So that's the way it's going to cut now. If I wanted to cut to the outside, I would select up here. If I wanted to cut to the inside, I would select here. I want to cut it right on that vector. Direction climb and conventional. In this case, it doesn't make a difference. Do a separate last pass, not on this toolpath. It's not necessary. Neither are adding tabs to the toolpath. They are not necessary. We're not cutting the star out. Down here, we have a lot of things that people don't really look at. Ramps, leads, the vector selection order, where to start, and corners. Now you'll notice it's grayed out. We're using a V-bit. It's going to follow the vectors. We have no choice. If the vectors have sharp corners, there will be sharp corners. If the vectors have rounded corners, there will be rounded corners. We can't do anything to change that when we're cutting on the vector. What a ramp is, it's when the bit comes down to plunge into the material. If it's plunging fairly deep, you can actually have it come down here and start to plunge in on that vector. And just as it touches the surface of the material, it will start moving in X and Y as it's plunging into the material until it gets to that cut depth, at which time it'll stop plunging, but continue moving on at the feed rate that you have set for that bit. So it's just a way of easing the bit into the work without putting a lot of stress on the tool. I usually use ramps. In this demonstration, I'm not going to because that's a subject for another video. Same thing with leads. I will talk about those in another video. Uh, the vector selection order, we only have one vector and start at the start points. We'll get into that in another video as well. Our safe Z here is 0.2 inches. The home position is 0.8 above the material. And we're going to go ahead and rename this star profile. And I like to add the name of the tool I'm going to use. In this case, we'll go with 90 degree. 
that way it's in the title of the the name of the toolpath I don't get confused I know which tool I'm going to use we'll click calculate it calculated that toolpath very quickly because this is a simple pattern to cut and we have our toolpath here and it automatically put us into the preview screen it also switched us over to the 3d view now from here I'll zoom in to show you what I'm talking about we can see that we have blue lines red lines and if I zoom in real close we can see a light blue line here the red line is a rapid movement the CNC is going to move at its rapid rate whatever that happens to be until it gets to this point the light blue is a plunge move this is where the bits going to plunge down into the material then zoom back out here it's going to start cutting our star along the blue line go back here and recenter my work that's what those different colors and symbols mean red is a rapid move light blue is a plunge dark blue is the path the tool is literally going to take to machine this shape so we have this toolpath selected we can tell it's selected because it's highlighted in blue it's the only toolpath I have so I cannot deselect it we'll go up here let's see our preview color is somehow switched to birch let's put that back to maple there we go and it changed my material the machined area color is when this preview gets finished what color is that machined area going to be right now it's going to stay the same color as the rest of the material I want to change it to a toolpath color a black that way that star will be colored black when it's finished cutting I have the speed of my preview turned down I have the preview animated but I've not drawn the tool so you won't see a little representation of the bit going around here I have it turned down so we can kind of watch what it does for purposes of this demonstration usually I've drugged this slider all the way up then we'll preview this selected toolpath and there we have our star we have cut approximately a sixteenth of an inch deep into the material and that's how our star is going to look now if you look right down here down below you'll see this X Y and Z display and you'll see when I get up here on the material my X and Y numbers are changing that is the X and Y position of where my cursor is if I go over here and move around it stops moving because I'm not on the material but if I'm over here it's moving and my Z is staying at zero because I'm on the surface of the material where that's Z zero but if I zoom in here and I put my pointer down on this line at the bottom of the groove the the V groove that we cut you can see that that Z changes so that's a quick way of telling you especially if I were to machine this all out it's a quick way of telling you how deep that's going to cut in to the material go back to Z view and then I'll click this to put the material into full screen that puts your material into the full screen this here brings you back to the top view for lack of a better term from here we still have a couple of options available to us we can reset our preview which undoes all of the tool paths we have run in this case that we don't there's a, we'll, there's only one that we have run or we can click undo last if you have already previewed three or four tool paths and you don't like the result of the tool path that just cut we can undo that last move go back and edit our tool path and I'll get into that further in another video right now we want to leave this alone and go ahead and preview our next toolpath so we'll close our preview 
we'll come back over here to our 2D view, click on that tab, and we get back to our drawing. Okay, back in our full screen 2D view, we can go ahead and calculate this vector. And this is our profile cutout. I'm going to cut all the way through the material with a quarter inch end mill. So to do that, I've selected the vector. I'll come back up to Profile Toolpath. My starting depth is going to be zero. I want it to start cutting from the top surface of the material. My bit, I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. I'm going to go ahead and accept everything as it is. Click OK. This time I want it to cut to the outside of my vectors. And again, I forgot to change my cut depth. Back up here to my cut depth. I don't want it to cut a sixteenth of an inch. I want it to cut all the way through the material. In fact, I want it to cut all the way through the material and about five thousandths into the spoil board so that I get a nice clean cut with my uh, end mill and it removes any tear out uh, from going through the material. So I'm going to highlight everything in that box, hit backspace, and I'm going to type Z plus 0 .005. So I've told it I want it to cut the depth, my Z depth, whatever I set my material thickness here in job setup. It's going to cut that depth plus five thousandths of an inch. You see how it's giving me the equation right below my cursor. Now when I hit the equals button on my keyboard, it does the math and sets it for me. So my quarter inch end mill is going to take six passes to go through that. That's fine. I have nothing but time. On this I'm not going to do a separate last pass. I'll use that for another video. Tabs, I'm not going to do that. I'll do that in another video. And the same with ramps, leads, etc. Except over here, I do want sharp external corners. Because we're cutting to the outside of the vector, I have a choice. I can have a kind of sort of rounded corner here. It won't actually do a radius for me it will just take the most direct route for itself with no regard for whether the corners are sharp or not. I want those sharp external corners so by clicking that button I'm making sure it knows that. That to do the calculations it needs to come out here and then come back and go down here to cut that sharp corner. I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to change the name to profile cutout and then add end mill so that I know that I need my end mill for this toolpath. Click calculate and the software gives me a warning that the tool will cut through the material. It's telling me that my material thickness is three quarters of an inch and we've set it to cut five thousandths over that. Pressing OK will continue with the toolpath calculation. However, the resulting toolpath will cut through the material. We want that. I've got a sacrificial spoil board. It's fine. So I click OK. And it calculates this toolpath. And again, we have our red rapid move. Let me bring that up here a little bit closer. We have our red rapid movement. Then we have our blue plunge, light blue plunge. But if you notice, we have six dark blue lines stacked on top of one another. That's showing each individual pass of that quarter inch end mill. So it's going to make, it's going to plunge down into the material, make one pass. Get back to this corner, it'll plunge down again, make another pass. Get back to this corner, plunge down again, and so forth. That's fine, that's the way we set it up, that's the way we want it. Here I have this toolpath selected, and my star profile toolpath is not selected. 
I can switch back and forth between the two and select whichever one I want. For this case, I do want the Profile Cutout toolpath selected, so we can go ahead and preview that. Now my material is still maple. I don't really care about a toolpath color here because you'll see why in just a minute. I'm going to know that it cut through the material. Gone ahead and animated the preview, and I've got my speed slowed down. Let's go ahead and preview this toolpath. So you see how it goes down in several steps. Now it's cut all the way through the material. This is my waist. So if you look down here to where it says double click on the waist areas in the 3D view to remove them. I can come over here and double click on this and my waist is removed so I can get a good look at the edges of the project. I've got those nice square corners. It is the size that I want it to be and the project looks good. I'll return to my Z view. If I want to reset this to a blank piece of material and look at my tool paths again, I would come over here, reset preview. If I've decided after doing that that, well, that was a mistake and I want to go ahead and recut everything, re preview everything, I would come back here and say preview all tool paths. And that would run these tool paths, preview these tool paths in the order that they're in here. So it'll do the star profile first, then the profile cutout second. So let's go ahead and do that. And there's our preview again. You'll notice here I have the profile cutout uh, selected. And I've got a blue arrow right here. These two arrows, and this arrow is grayed out, these two arrows allow you to change the order of your tool paths here. The profile cutout should always be the last tool path in order. It should be the last thing you do. You don't want to cut out your material and have it flopping around on the table, then have other things to do out here in the middle, like engraving this star. So your profile should always be your last operation. But just to demonstrate, I can click this blue arrow and move it up. Now, because it's at the top, it's got nowhere to go up here. I can't make it go up any further. I can only bring it back down. You will also notice that right over here, we've got little representations of the bits that we're using. The 90 degree you have a representation of a V-bit. For my cutout, we have a representation of an end mill. We also have this little black square right here. That's reminding me that I have the color for this toolpath set to black. I could easily change it to red or orange or yellow or whatever, but I chose black. Reset my preview here. And if I select one toolpath by putting a check mark in it. Over here in my 3D view, we have the toolpath illustrated out here. I can come up here and click Preview Visible Toolpaths, and the only toolpaths it will run are the ones I have selected. So if I've got five or six different toolpaths over here, I can put a check mark in one or two of them preview visible toolpaths and it will only preview those that I have a check mark in. And the minute that preview is complete, the check mark goes away. Again, to preview all of them, whether they have a check mark in them or not, I click preview all toolpaths, double click on my waist to get rid of it. Now there's one last thing I'll show you here before we end this video, and that is save a preview image. After you have all of the toolpaths are previewed, 
you can save preview images for to email your client, your customer, to post online to ask questions. This is where you would do it in this 3D view. So let's move it into a nice position here to where the client can see what's going on. Maybe I need just a little bit more of an isometric view. So I'll come up here to this icon and click on an isometric view and it lays back the project just like this. Then I can come along, save preview image, and put it in here. Let's call it star preview. I want to go into this. Save it there. Now I can come down here and there's a photograph that I can send to my client, customer, post online, email to a friend, whichever. Okay, so that is the most basic of all of the toolpaths, yet the most complex of all the toolpaths, the profile toolpath. So if you got anything at all out of this video, I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up down below. If you'd like to follow along with this series or follow along in my further CNC adventures, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. But whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and y'all take care.